Hello, everybody, and happy anniversary! In case you can't tell, uh, with the release of our new character, which I love that they timed this so well. Blizzard timed it so well. Um, for those of you who do not know, it is the 20th anniversary of StarCraft, the, when the original StarCraft came out, and... To help celebrate that, we have a new hero from the original StarCraft, and we've got some new stuff focused on StarCraft. Uh, I will show you guys the collection to show you guys what I'm referring to in just a moment. But first things first, we got to take a look at the newest hero added to the roster, and that is one of my favorite Protoss from the original StarCraft, and that is Phoenix who, valiantly, as it says here in the description, Steward of the Templar, as one of the greatest heroes in Protoss history, Phoenix's deeds on the battlefield are legendary. After falling to the Zerg during the invasion of Ayr, his body was recovered and implanted into a dragoon, so he could continue to fight. Not even death can stop Phoenix from achieving glory and valor. He is a straight-up badass. He is awesome. One of the coolest Protoss you will ever see. Uh, just one of those, you know, guys that we just immediately fell in love with. A true warrior. And I do like that they brought him back as a Dragoon instead of a Zealot. Considering that we this is how he was pretty much for most of the original game. Including Brood War. Um... If you want to find out more, be sure to swing on over to my playthroughs of the original StarCraft campaigns uh, to check that out. But we are going to be looking at him, uh, see how he works within this game. So he is a ranged assassin. His difficulty is set to medium. He doesn't really seem that difficult to control. I messed with him in the PTR over the past week. Um, some people think he is busted. Um, just broken OP. I don't, I don't know if he's OP, but then again, I, I just thought he, he, I, I really like him, but we'll go over that in just a moment. First things first, we got to look at his skins. This is his default look, of course, the Dragoon from StarCraft. This is the Nerezim Phoenix, if you want to make him represent the Dark Templar. Twilight Phoenix, just kind of a cool different skin here. Experimental Phoenix, not necessarily sure what this is going for. And then Rusted Phoenix. I'm one, I think this is a Zergling, this symbol right here on this uh, skin here. And then we have Ruin Walker Phoenix. He looks straight up as an elemental from War, World of Warcraft. Excuse me. Can't talk today. Withered Ruin Walker and Colossal Ruin Walker. So if you want to make him look like an elemental, there you go. His abilities. So this is interesting because I was curious how they were going to make this work. He has Q is Plasma Cutter. No, not the Plasma Cutter from uh, Dead Space. Uh, create a laser beam at the target point that circles around Phoenix twice, dealing 145 damage to enemies hit and slowing them by 25% for four seconds. It's an interesting, uh, not necessarily AoE, attack but i guess you could say maybe a zoning or clearing ability it can be pretty strong uh if you you know if you build around it this is something cool his w is weapons mode activate the change between repeater cannon and phase bomb repeater cannon his basic attack speed is increased by 150 percent his phase bomb his basic attacks have 1.5 increased range and they deal 25 percent more damage and they splash to nearby enemies so you either go with Fast attack speed like Tracer or Tychus. Not quite that fast. I think I saw it was uh, 1.85 attacks per second. It's pretty fast. Or you go for AoE damage. And then his E is Warp. He gets a blink. Warp to uh, targeted location, phasing out after half a second and arriving 0.75 seconds later. It's pretty handy warp. It's really good. His trait is Shield Capacitor, typical for Protoss. Phoenix has a permanent 800 shield, which regenerates at 80 per second after not taking damage for 5 seconds. So it's like Muradin's trait, except except uh, instead of his health regening after a while, it's his shields. 
So he gets a shield plus his uh, health. His two heroics, Purification Salvo, 75 second cooldown, which by the way I should point out, he does not have a resource. He just has his health. So like other heroes, such as, uh, gosh, who could I compare him to? I guess Cho'Gal is an example. He doesn't have a resource to rely on. Um, same with Tracer. He just has his health and his cooldowns. Jail for 1.5 seconds, sweeping a laser in front of Phoenix that locks onto min enemy heroes. Once channeling finishes, fire five missiles at each locked hero, dealing 86 damage each. Deals 50% increased damage to slowed targets. And Planet Cracker, 100 second cooldown. After half a second, channel a powerful beam that spans across the battlefield, meaning it has global range. For 4 seconds, dealing 105 damage every 0.25 seconds to non-structure enemies hit. This includes minions. It says non-structure, so uh, just enemies, you know, other than structures, will be damaged by this. So, I've messed with these. This is the more, like, cool-looking, flashy one. And it seems really impactful. Global range, just like anything that crosses that is going to get, like, a lot of damage. This one... It's, it doesn't seem as flashy. It probably seems more effective somewhat in terms of, but it doesn't seem to do that much damage. Um, you know, you got to stand still for a little bit to target and then it'll fire it off, but then it doesn't seem to do that much damage. It, it doesn't seem as effective in terms of like, you know, impactful, I guess I should say. If you can time and position this right, I think this could be really effective. Like if someone if uh, someone's trying to capture a point, or if they get caught in a mosh, or if they get hit by Hanzo's uh, arrow ult, where they get stunned and they're just stuck there, this could be really strong. His talent tree. At level 1, advanced targeting. Hitting enemy heroes with plasma cutter permanently increases Phoenix basic attack damage by 0.75 up to 75. After hitting 30 heroes, plasma cutter will then circle an additional time. After hitting enemy heroes with basic attacks three times while repeater cannon is active, the next basic attack with phase bomb does 100% more damage and splashes in a 50% larger area. Mobile offense. After removing unmounted, Phoenix's next basic attack deals 30% more damage to heroes. So... I think Pally Time said that this would, you know, is the one to go to because this basically helps teach you how you're supposed to play the game, which is attack, move. You attack and then you move, and then you attack and then you move. So, I guess, he, you know, what he's saying is that this can be an effective, like, tutorial tool to help you get better at playing the game. That you're supposed to uh, never just stand there and attack. You're supposed to attack and then move. Then attack and move. Just keep on moving, you know. Um, I tested this, and it seems pretty effective, but... I don't know. It, it you know, it's I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Obviously, it's the first week and so that he's been out, so it's gonna obviously need a little time to us to see how effective this is really gonna be. Level four target acquired basic attacks against slow to heroes. Keep in mind you do have a slow with your plasma cutter. With with repeater cannon active, grants ten percent movement speed for four seconds up to forty percent. Pretty effective. Pretty uh, pretty interesting. While Phase Bomb is active, basic attacks against heroes slowed by Plasma Cutter slow all enemies in the area by 35% for 4 seconds. Hero takedowns reset warps cooldown. Remember, you don't have a resource. So the so you are basically getting the treatment that Lee Ming gets, where if you get a takedown, boom, you can do your warp again. Which can be awesome. Because this can be... You guys know how much I love abilities that give you the ability to either engage in a fight or disengage from a fight. And, you know, the fact that this, you know, very slow-walking crab-like, you know, structure here is able to have this blink and be able to have its cooldown reset in case it needs to get out of trouble or chase, that's pretty nice. Emergency Protocol. When shield capacitor's shield becomes depleted, gain movement speed for five seconds so if you're getting focused and you lose your shield you'll be able to move even faster uh to try and hopefully get away before they finish your health level seven plasma cutter deals 50 percent more damage to slow targets which again the plasma cutter itself does slow them so it should then be able to just keep doing bonus damage 
After arriving with warp, gain 125 attack speed for 4 seconds while repeater can in repeater cannon mode. Trying to use it offensively if you want to get some more attacks in. So, and again, he's pre his, it's pretty a pretty fast attack speed. Uh, divert power, weapons, 20 second cooldown, activate to instantly drain shield capacitor shield, but increase basic attack damage for 5 seconds proportion to the amount of shields that were drained up to an 80 percent increase so if you have full shields and you use this you're gonna get quite a nice bit of extra bonus damage level 13 uh defensive tier pretty much after arriving with warp you gain 40 armor for four seconds pretty strong phoenix gains spell armor while he has a shield from shield capacitor so as long as your shield is up you get permanent 15 percent 15 spell armor so you're going to be queuing into quick match against a lot of mages. This is going to be pretty nice to have as long as you can keep your shields up. When Phoenix is healed, Shield Capacitor's shield recharges for 20% of the healing received. So if you have a reliable healer, uh, that's going to be really nice to have. Permanently reduce uh, Phoenix's maximum health by 10%, but increase Shield Capacitor's shield by 20%. Basic attacks regenerate shields equal to 20% of the damage dealt. So you attack, you're going to be generating your more shields. That's pretty nice. Every third basic attack against heroes while repeater can is active deals an additional 6% of the target's maximum health as damage. So that's a giant killer right there. So if you need a giant killer against a high health target like a Cho'Gall or a Stitches, then there you go. Phoenix deals 50% more damage while he has a shield from Shield Capacitor. So if you have your shield up, you then just deal more damage. <laughs> I like that there's a lot of these things like, hey, just have your shields up and you're going to have all these bonuses. And then, he has battle momentum. Phoenix's basic attacks reduces ability cooldowns by half a second. All his abilities, including his heroic. Because it just, it says his abilities. It doesn't say his regular basic abilities. It says his ability cooldowns. That should include his heroic. That's pretty nice. Level 20. He doesn't have a buff for either of his ults. But his 20 talents are pretty cool. Check these out. Hitting enemy hero with plasma cutter fires a purification salvo missile at them after half a second. Dealing 86 damage, deals 50% damage to slow targets. Remember, Plasma Cutter slows. Re Repeater Cannon grants 50% more attack speed, and Phase Bomb grants one more range. So you're just buffing both of your weapon modes. Or, Unconquered Spirit. Upon taking fatal damage, Shield Capacitor regains 600 shield. This effect has a 120 second cooldown. Just a way to help keep yourself alive there before dying. It's almost like a Divine Palm. But then again... By the time you get to level 20, 600 shields may not seem that great. Obviously, we'll have to see that. I'll have to see that in action and see how effective that's actually going to be. Um, if it's if it's really really good, I mean, I wonder if this. I see. I'm looking at this in in the uh, collection. I gotta look at this when I'm level 20. See how much shields are gonna be there. See if that changes or scales up. So let's get into a game and see him in action and figure out what kind of build we could go with. By the way, I love that um, his portrait is not the Dragoon, but rather him, like, inside the Dragoon. Like, his actual Protoss face. I love that little, that little detail. Reminding you that it's still him in there. And that was something that I think maybe some people were confused about. That basically, I'd like to think that he didn't necessarily die. He was dying. And they put him, his body in the Dragoon, where he can't use his body anymore, but he's still able to still be barely alive because of the Dragoon. You see how his head is like, like in a, a, a water tank here in this portrait? So I like to think that somehow like his bot, what, what's left of his body is in there. Just barely alive, but only because of the Dragoon body. Almost like uh, 
Darth Vader needing his suit to keep him alive. Kind of like that. So let's see here. We are on Dragonshire. We have... The team is Phoenix, Lucio, Hammer, Muradin, and Zul'jin versus Lili, Diablo, Malthael, Zagara, and Junkrat. Hmm... Hmm. So you see there's the uh, plasma cutter there. Let's go with this. So, all right, let's let me uh, show you guys the uh actually first we got to check out some stuff. First off, the dance. <laughs> it's probably about as much as he can do in that body. The taunt. Uh-huh. Alright. Uh, let's see. You guys see? So you can be able to change where the plasma cutter is going to hit here how wide or far you want it to be it goes around like that and it'll end there so you can choose where you start it and then that's where it'll end so right now i've got a peter can active i hit w it changes to this which is the phase cannon and it looks like this so you see you can getting that splash damage this can be a really effective tool for uh, wave clear so Phoenix can actually be somewhat of a solo laner with tools like this. Especially with also with regenerating shields. And then of course back to repeater cannon. Fires pretty fast. Alright. And then this. And then his warp. You can see this is the range of his warp. Alright so let's see how this works. That's pretty effective right there, I think. All right, let's see. Let's go with emergency protocol. I like the idea of having that movement speed when my I lose my shields to help me try and get away from danger. Danger, danger. So I'm trying to do that extra bonus attack damage there with the attack move there. See there, are, see this is unfortunately something I gotta break. I will sometimes just stand there and just attack. And I know that's not what you're supposed to do, but it's, you know, it's force of habit. And I gotta break that habit if I wanna be, get better. So maybe Pally's right. Maybe I do need to, uh, pick that just to help me get better at the game let's see here i do like this warp warfare here all right let's go with warp warfare Let's see how much faster I can attack when I do this. 2.78 per second. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice attack speed. By the way, this is his unique mount animation here. He just goes into hover mode. I am hovering... Which, if you combine that with the attack move. Look at that bonus damage I'm getting on him. 
And then I use my plasma cutter to slow him, and then boom, there you go. And now I can just whoop, warp away to take a moment to have my shields recharge. I can even sippy cup. And then look how fast my shields regenerate. Pretty nice. Plasma Cutter is also really effective at uh, lane clear. Oh boy. Ah, but you see. Alright, so, so that time that I was taking to try and warp away was enough for Cigar to finish me off. So that is, you know, something to consider is the is uh when you do it, you got to take into consideration the time that uh, it's going to need to take for you to actually start your warp away. Alright. I want to go with Planet Cracker. I'm sure that the other ult is going to end up being the one that people will want to go with, but... But, you know, that can change. You know, when Maiev came out, people thought uh, Warden's Cage was going to be garbage. <coughs> and now it's pretty much the only ult that, that uh, anyone ever takes when they play Maiev. Who is still considered broken, by the way. Hello, Zagara. All right, hold on. And then... Planet There we go. That's right. Run from me. Fear me. Ah, hold on. There we go. There it is. I was trying to get that creep. There we go. Look at that extra bonus damage I'm doing. I warp. I get an extra bonus attack speed. Oh, boy. They're all coming. Oh, Junkrat's coming. So that's the price I paid for using my warp offensively like that when it has a 15 second cooldown instead of waiting to use it defensively to get away because I could have used it to get away from Junkrat when he came down but because I had used it offensively just earlier I paid for it by getting killed so that's something I'm going to have to learn is when to use it offensively and when to use it defensively Hammer, sit on the point. Stupid AI, Sergeant Hammer. <laughs> Stupid AI, Lucio. Using the movement speed there instead of the healing. I you tried to use my warp where his grenades fell. I should have moved away and then used my warp. So it's not an instantaneous warp or blink like Zeratul or Tracer. Because of that delay, it can be an issue. So look at let's look at their comp. I, they don't have much spell damage, so I don't need spell armor. I do have a Lucio, but... He's not really a. He hasn't really been a, uh, around me or near me. Look at the cigar putting that. Hmm. A danium shield. <laughs> you know, for a second I saw that I almost thought I said adamantium. I would have been like, "What adamantium?" All right, hold on. I'm gonna use go with that. So that in case I do use it offensively, I'll get a bit of protection. It's like, uh-uh-uh. Hold on. 
There we go. That's what I was talking about. Using it offensively there to get a kill. Now, if I had taken the talent where my takedowns reset the cooldown, I could have been able to then ha use it again there. So, I could see a warp build happening here. Planet Cracker! Oh, I thought Zagara or someone was going to be, like, right there. Oh my gosh, all that health regen. But then again, that's why I love playing Diablo. Okay, maybe this was a bad idea. Because... Oh, Murden! T to the rescue! Unleash its power. Yeah, that was probably bad on my part there. <laughs> uh, the AI Lucio just hanging out with a Sergeant Hammer the whole time. Never helping me. Look at this! They're taking that! Stupid AI teammates! Level 16... You know, considering that I'm having issues with the, my cooldowns, I may go with Arsenal's Overcharge here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Let's go with Arsenal Overcharge. Because maybe... Getting those basic attacks will help solve my issue of my cooldowns. Look at how many of them are up there trying to take that. I am on my way. My goodness, what an attack wave. I'm trying to do this attack move move thing it, it's it's it, it, it's not something you can just like learn right away there we go let's get rid of that nidus worm hello diablo welcome to die There we go. There we go. Get rid of that creep. Just continue to push here. Although the Dragonite came up here. Oh, it doesn't apply to uh, structures. It probably only at top. Hold on. Let me look at that talent. To heroes. Okay, so that extra uh, damage only applies to heroes. That's important to know. Hold on. I see an opportunity here. And a cracker! There we go! Yeah! Impactful! That's on that way. we go all right level 20 all right so look at how, how many shields i'd be getting now that we're at level 20 let's go ahead and do that unconquered spirit
Okay. So like I said at the beginning, I really like Phoenix. He just takes some practice and getting used to if you want to get the full potential of what his kit or talent tree can do. Obviously, if I want to take advantage of that level 1 talent, I need to practice uh, attack move. Otherwise, I think I might be going with the Plasma Cutter talent quest. Uh, because as you can see, it can do pretty effective uh, damage, not to mention that it applies a slow, which can be really good in team fights. And I'm sure that the other ult is going to be effective, but I do like the feel that that ult has in terms of making him and then have some kind of global presence. So the build I went with today... Mobile Offense, Emergency Protocol, Warp Warfare, Planet Cracker, Adanium, or, yeah, Adanium Shell, Arsenal Overcharge, and Unconquered Spirit. Though, I don't think this is going to be the regular build I go with. It was something I was experimenting with. I think I'm probably going to want to mess with Advanced Targeting. Warp Conduit, also, also I you know, in situations I like as well. If you know how to manage your shields, I think Divert Power is going to be pretty good. Uh, rapid Recharge, if you know you're going to have a Reliable Healer. Or Dampening Field, if you're going to be going against a lot of spell damage, like a Chromie or a Leeming. Um, I think Photonic Weaponry could be good as well, if you're able to keep your shields up. And then, like, and then either that or Singularity Charge, if you just want to do more damage. I think is I think Phoenix is really good, and I really like him. Um, so, Phoenix, of course, with the newest hero, now, there were a couple of changes, balance changes that happened. For one thing, Varian got a rework where now his ults are at level 4. Yeah, his ults are at level 4. At level 10, you get either Warbringer and Shield Wall, and by the way, Shield Wall got changed. But you know what? I'm going to do a separate video where I talk about these changes about how much I think this changes Varian. I've played a lot of Varian, so I'm very interested in these changes. And I will talk about that next time. Stay tuned.